So the main event was a stadium stampede, and we can we can talk about what happened in the match, inner circle and uh, the pinnacle. There was a billion things in this match. There's a billion it, like, things, but here is the key to this match to me, Dave. This match on this show was the story of all of our last year plus, in the sense that we saw this show with this very, very hot crowd, and they're going crazy for everything, and then it's time for Stadium Stampede, and they're on this football field, and it's an empty building, and there are fans in the uh, the actual building, but we don't really hear them. They're not really piping we, in all the crowd noise. You can kind of hear them. We could kind of hear them. But mostly what you're watching is you're watching a pandemic cinematic match. Yes. And when it first started, I was like, oh my God, like I was having PTSD, that I'm in the middle of the pandemic again, there's no fans, and I'm watching a cinematic match. And so they do the match, and it's a fun match, and we can talk about everything. There was a a lot of good stuff, the Urban Meyer and... But let me get um, to the point. So they do all of this stuff, and for like 20 minutes, they're just doing this cinematic match, and they're doing all this cool stuff. But then finally, at the end, they brawl back into the building, and all the fans are there, and the fans start going crazy for these spots that they're doing, and they end up in the ring, and the big finish is Sammy Guevara, who was the guy who cost the inner circle the match at War Games when he surrendered to save Chris Jericho, and MGF tossed the guy off the cage anyway. He gets his big revenge, and he pins Sean Spears in front of this sold-out crowd, and the place goes crazy, and they're playing Jericho's music, and the crowd's singing, and the inner circle is hugging, and it's a happy ending with people as the show goes off the air. I just thought this was the greatest ending of this show, the way that they transitioned from empty arena to building to happy ending to singing fans and hugging. I just thought it was awesome. And the match itself was fun. might have been a little long. It was like 31 minutes. But I just thought the whole package was such a great way to end this pay-per-view. Yeah. As a match, I don't think it was... It, was, it, was, it had to be different, and it was from last year. Um, I don't think it was as good as last year, uh, but it was, there was a lot of, you know, it was, it was very, you know, very creative. It was, um, they would kind of go from scene to scene, you know, so it was like, you would have a deal where like, they'd have Jericho and MJF brawl for a while. So, and then and they, they, they're in, so they're in the, in the football offices and including, um, they see, um, I think Charlie Strong and Urban Meyer who are you know, plotting out the season for the Jaguars, and then they show up in their office, and Jericho, like, says, you know, have a good season, and they said, what does he say, like, holy shit or something? Um, but, you know, big Urban Meyer cameo, and they had the brawl with Shad Khan's cardboard cutout, and then you had Jake Hager and uh, Wardlow throwing each other around, and then you had... Or- so, you know, here's one thing. Ortiz and Santana, um, both on Friday night got pile driven through tables and it was like it never happened it was like um i know that you don't want to do like a bunch of braces because jericho needed one and that was actually part of the story of the match too is is you know boy he did a lot and then he looked like he was hurting something fierce but i just thought that if you're going to do those those two two those two uh table pile drivers that um you should have done a lot more with that during this match because it was like you did this angle. I mean, like pile drivers through tables. It's not like it was a month ago. It was two days ago, and we're just acting like you know it. It never happened. Um, but Ortiz and Santana were out there with FTR. They did a. Um, they ended up in a bar with patrons in the bar and their decking fans, which actually obviously you know wrestlers and stuff and. Uh, um, you know, throwing glasses at each other and hitting hitting patrons with glasses, and uh, Tully Blanchard was all dressed for a 1986 bunkhouse stampede, <laughs> and um, and a- as we're as we're FTR, and um, you know, yeah, a lot of sight gags and things like that. It was, um, I think, a little long, but um, you know, very very creative um, and uh, very entertaining, and um, yeah, good. Good finish at the end. You end the show playing the Judas music and everyone going nuts. Um, so yeah, I mean, at the end, it was, it was a good ending. It was a very good ending to the show. Happy ending. And, uh, um, 
the idea when you the one thing when the show was over is um i mean I, it wasn't like when it's over you know one of the, the thing i always think that when a show is over a big pay-per-view is over you should leave people feeling there's this match and i want to see this match when it's, and this is the same for ufc but you can't control it but it's like you know like that's what like it's always good with ufc when you put guys in the same weight class in like two of the key matches because then you're going to naturally get two winners and people are going to want to go well if especially if they both look good we want to see these guys against each other so i always think that the best way to end the show is have it in people's minds you don't have to announce the match but have them know where it's going because they want to see it in this case it was different in this case they ended the show and i feel that you want to see wrestling in all these new cities in front of crowds going crazy like this crowd the crowd was the main event the crowd was the lure the crowd was the drawing card it's 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 it was really interesting it was um atmosphere you know you're you were you were selling when it was over the thing everybody talked about was not necessarily i mean yeah the young bucks match was phenomenal and was a match of the year candidate but the big thing was wrestling in front of this kind of a crowd having this much fun a packed house this atmosphere i mean that is something that every promoter every promoter dreams of a crowd like this and if you can get this every wednesday um man i don't know i don't know that you can but you know, this is the, you know, the the thing is crowds do what they're taught to do by what they see. And man, if I was a promoter, I would love this show because not only did you give the people great matches and guys got over and, and guys looked like stars, but you made it look like this is so much fun to attend. And I can't wait to go in there and sing songs and drink and whatever but just go this this made pro wrestling look like the coolest thing in the world you know not, not you know and uh, you know right now pro wrestling is not the coolest thing in the world obviously because you know i mean it, it, it's going to be interesting to see you know and i don't know that it's going to happen but it will be interesting if all of a sudden you know some of these shows start getting like a lot of people buying tickets i mean I, it probably won't happen but in the long run if you keep having this for a long enough time um in theory it should help a lot um you know i mean it's a uh, it's tough it's tough we're you know for for a lot of different reasons but uh when it was over it was like man going to AEW just looked like fun and and you know and not you know going to wwe sometimes doesn't look like fun and some there's some weeks where maybe going to AEW doesn't look like fun but but this week it it looked you know this week friday and sunday man it 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 was a it was great for it was it was great to it was it was a great two shows for the promotion i think i think hey if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website wrestlingobserver.com if you sign up today you get access to every single one of them the 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week you can podcast them listen to them on the road at work working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts, and also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com, 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.